Yeah. Seven. And anyway. But well, let's go back a little bit before we, because you instinctual. You see, you, see, you, you see, you should have stopped me somewhere. All right, when okay, you say, when, no, no. Because when you say, tell me my life, it's like, I go. Boom. Yeah, no, I know. We're gonna, I got to <laughs> gotta get the deaf mix part, how that creates. All right, listen, bring, bring it all on. You, you, you have the next five hours. No worries. <laughs> Instinctual imagination blows up, and I know that. And your name now on a major label scene, and people who don't know you now know who David Morales is outside the peers. Okay, and the music industry is starting to see your name. I remember you were at Def at For the Record at the same time. Did when did Def Mix and when did Frankie's relationship with you really take its place, its position? Um. Me and Frankie hit it off within seconds. So I almost want to say we, we were instantly great friends. Um, of course, no, he didn't tell me best time stories when we met. <laughs> but, you know, we, 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 we met up for the record. You know what I mean? Obviously, you know, Judy, Judy introduced us, you know, because Judy knew Frankie. They know each other. And, you know, it's funny. It's like I was already starting to do mixes. Frankie moved to New York because he was playing at the world. And we hit it off. And then, you know, we happened to, because we were, just, we were both starting to do mixes at the same time. We were working out of, uh, even working out of the, the studio um, and, and that Gary Salzman used to manage that was Reggie Lucas Studio, Quantum, Quantum Studios. And they used to send the car for us because they wanted the business. So, you know, the rate was great. Oh my God, who was mixing for us? Um, John Papo was 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 a lot a lot of our Josh Milan was playing, was were was playing for was playing for both of us as well. In nineteen eighty seven, really I came up with Death Mix Productions, because Death back in them days, man, good. You know what I mean? That was the old hip hop slang back then. Yo, that shit is death. So, you know, Chef Pettibon had Master Mix Productions. This one had this kind of production. So, okay, mixed by Dave Morales for Death Mix Productions. That's how that came about. You understand? Oh, but before even, I, uh, but before I even, they, wait, before Instinctual, there was two Puerto Ricans, a black man, and a Dominican. Right. Let's problem. not forget, let's not forget that. That's a big record, too. That's another big so, one. Um, so, I mean, um, you know, we just, so that's how the name started. And then since Judy was representing the two of us, okay, you know what, then we just do everything under the death mix umbrella and, you know, things just took off. We didn't, listen, I don't think any of us really expected what, you know, Anything, you know, because there's no plan. I mean, it's it's not like today that you know the, the game has been already the path. We have shown the path to today's generation that now you can be a you know you can you can come up with a plan to build a career. Now you understand. We come from a, well, I come from a place that there was no career. You know what I mean? Even DJing wasn't a career. That's right. That's what I'm saying. Even yeah, DJing was was, was a career. The DJ right. uh, for, for a lot of people, I mean, unless you were one of those DJs, like I remember Bruce Fowler played at Better Days and he played five nights a week. Yo, I mean, well, a lot of DJs, when you had a resident, you had a residency. You understand? Um, so, I mean, okay, Continue. those that they so you know, let, me, don't, I mean, let me just make sure you understand yeah. this. You are now coming up, you're basically writing the, you know, your own story, your epitaph at that point. What were you looking back to? Because people can look back at all of us and take notes, like you said. But at that time, what were you referencing to? to there, was nothing, there was nothing to reference to. That's right. To Absolutely you. nothing. I mean, let me listen. I said, I had a job at a restaurant. Um, I dropped out of school. I was, you know, I fell into the thing of, about doing parties. You know what I'm saying? Um, that I was making money, gave me some notoriety, but who knows if if that if that would have been the game? Then I joined the record pool. I mean, which opened some doors. I got to network with people because I have to, as I reflect back, a lot of it was networking because had I not met, being in that organization really has helped me to be where I am today. From 
from the top of the list to Judy Weinstein, you know, I mean, um, my biggest mentor and, you know, and, and an advisor to all the talent that I've met in there from Boos Forest to Jellybean to Kenny. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, all of that was all energy, positive energy to actually take in, you know what I mean? And to really, and really just to open your eyes to, it's like, how do I say? It's like Bruce opened the studio. Oh, okay. Okay, that looks interesting. Okay, I'll buy a drum machine, even if I don't know how to buy a drum machine. If I don't know how to work a drum machine, I don't know how to do it. I can't play key. Oh, she, I mean, it's like I was copying what Bruce Forrest was doing in better days. You know what I mean? I bought a drum machine. My first keyboard was a CZ 101. There you go. You know what I'm saying? I remember at the old one trying to play some notes, trying to be cool. I went, what the hell did I know what I was doing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I must have been playing some whack ass notes. Um, but you try, yeah. but you try. Well, you know what? It, That's the it's key. like, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> but was there a plan? No, absolutely not. I had no idea as far as remixing. You have to remember that. And then, and then where the remixing world went from one place, because the beginning of time, only when we did instinctual, did we actually change all the music? Because before that, you, Okay, you added you added you know one or two keyboard parts. Maybe you had some percussions. You know what I'm saying? But you didn't alter that track at all. And then, and then when time stretching came in, oof, oh boy, right? And once Steve Hurley killed it, we remember the time by Michael Jackson. Everybody wanted a time stretch version. And it wasn't, they expected to rewrite the record every time after that. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I have made, I have, I have made people millions while I got a standard fee. But I made people millions. You know what I'm saying? Retirement plans. You know what I'm saying? They bought houses. They like, you know, it's funny. When I told some people some of the records that I made, they're like, you did that record? You did that record? It's like, yeah, that thing went by. That thing multi-plan, a multi-plan, a multi-plan, a multi-plan. You know what I mean? But you know what? It's like, and, and, and as I tell people today, it's like, you know, I sacrificed a lot to be where I am today. You understand what I'm saying? And by that, I mean, I worked in the studio every single day. I lived, I, I lived in Barry Park City. I rarely went home. I sleep on the sofa. You know what I'm saying? We were turning over records in 48 hours. You know what I'm saying? Bringing in three, four keyboard players, the percussion player. You know what I mean? The engineer put up the mix. I, I nap on the sofa. It was ready for me in eight hours. I go there, you know, and he went to bed. I mean, so, you know, but I loved every minute of it. You know what I'm saying? So I was mad. You know what I mean? It's like I was mixing two or three records a week. I was I was working at the hottest club in New York. I was working at, at the Red Zone. That's right. It's like it's like it's like, uh, it's like a lot of people will play real to uh uh promos. I was playing real to reels. I was playing two new two to three new tracks every single week. It's like instead of records, I had a, I, I had shows of real to reels. I mean, wow, it's like when, when, when we sort of like think back, this is, I have to knock on wood. And I'm grateful, thank you, Lord, has allowed me to ride this journey and still being a player in the game. You know what I'm saying? And still be a player so many years later. And, you know, as I've told some, I had this conversation with someone just the other day that I said, you know, it's like, it has to be your life. You, you understand what I'm saying? It's like, even, it's like, even today, it's like, okay, we go to whatever, whatever, whatever. It's like, you can be a part-time DJ. You can be a part-time producer. You know what I'm saying? And be, and, and be the best that you can at it. You understand? Why though? Why? Because if some you people have day jobs. Tell them why. You have to explain that. Why? You know. You said, right. Okay. But they, uh, they said, I had a day. They said, I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate that I've been able to take something that I love. Not many people have, 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 have this opportunity. 
Um, but I was, and, you know, I guess I got lucky and my cards fell the way they fell. You understand? Uh, in other words, I was mixing records. Um, I became, you know, a global superstar. I didn't intend it just happened. I started to travel the world. You know what I mean? Listen, the beginning, there wasn't great money in the beginning. Not like this shit is going on today. Um, so I, you know, so, you know, uh, I, 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 my reputation built a lot from remixing more than anything. And it's almost the same game today. If you really look at it, you know what I mean? It wasn't even about, I think a lot of people didn't know that I was career DJ. They thought I was a career remix of producer first. I mean, the outside world, um, when we, in reality, it's the opposite. You know what I mean, like DJ and DJ is in my blood. Um, you know, as I'm, 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 I'll be 59 this year. I don't see myself doing anything else. Do you know what I'm saying? There is nothing else. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm like an old dog. It's like, it's like telling the old person to move out of the house and they've been living there for 70 years. They're going to be like, I'm a die here. Right. You're taking me out in a body bag. It's like, no, 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 no. So it's like, it's like, you know, as, as you see what's going on now, okay, so some of you know what I mean, for that person that has that regular job at the moment, that maybe you're part-time. When I mean by part-time, it's like, because let's say even us bedroom DJs, because we were all bedroom DJs, make no mistake, right? Sure. That mean that means we all had a we all had a priority job. Every single one of us, every single one. Nobody was most people. Nobody. I don't know somebody that was born a DJ from the beginning and child. So, for a lot of us, yeah, we've had to. There was that job, and then when we came home, okay, uh, when you uh, that's that one day out of the week that you took to go to the record store and spend. While well, you allocated your allowance to buying certain records that weekend. And then you went home and you play music because you want to play music. Make, because how many of us were buying records and playing records at home and we had nowhere to play? Right. But, right? But we still keep it, right? But we still DJ. We couldn't wait to get home to DJ. When it oh. came to the weekend and you didn't oh. have to go to work, when you got up in the daytime in the morning, you turned on your sound system. Just because it's that, that doesn't mean it's part time. Because every day you went home, you practiced playing records every single day. When you got that itch, you're scratching that itch every single day. There's no way you're not. Okay. And I'm talking about when you coming up with that hunger when you know your 20s and your 30s, yo, chow. It's like that thing is like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, and the same thing goes with, with producing. I mean, listen. I, I I get up every day, and, and you know I mean, and sometimes the juices are flowing, and sometimes they're not. But what I but what I mean is that that I love to do it, and whatever spare time I have, obviously I have more spare time than the next one. But it's not to say because a person has more time; it, it's all about the dedication that you put toward it. Right. That's what that's about. The 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 quality of time that you put into it that that's the thing so yes you, you, you want to be a producer you want to be a dj if you're a piano player or you know, if you play keys or, or you like to make music so it's not that you need to be doing it eight hours a day you know what i mean but can you what can you do eight hours a day yeah but that's up to you right you know, that's up to you yeah. so that's the dedication that means okay you get out of work at five six o'clock you go home you have it yes i understand well for people that have families, you know what? God bless you, because that's a whole other subject altogether. You know what I'm saying? Sure. But I mean, but I mean, there's a lot of guys that I know. A lot of DJs on the circuit don't really have families unless they're older already. You know what I'm saying? But in general, if you're that young kid coming up that you ain't married, you ain't got kids. Yes, you have a job, but yo, you go home, yo, yo, you get on your game. Right. You get on your game until you're ready to sleep. You know what I mean? Because my game, when I come in the studio sometimes and I live one minute away, but if I'm in that zone making music, yo, I skip a meal. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? I skip a meal. Because yeah. I know if I go home, I'm going to break that. But I don't want to go home. I'm in a zone. Now, I'm not in that zone all the time. 
Okay, you want to say something? <laughs> you know, because here's the thing that I, you know, again, when you mentioned that you guys changed the whole framework, I'm going to call you a framer because you. this is where you get the change position. Where I remember hearing Judy Weinstein saying, you know, David and Frankie are reproducing these remixes. They weren't just remixes. They were reproductions. You guys had Satoshi, Terry Boris, all these great keyboard players. You guys were going in. You especially were going in. We heard the R&B version, which was one version. And then we heard the Morales version. Were you guys able to tell the companies, hey, we're reproducing, are we able, we would like to have some publishing? That was too early in the game for that. That was too early in the game for that. Too early, right? I mean, listen, I did, my first big one was C.C. Penison, finally. Okay? My other biggest one, a lot of people don't know, is Mr. Loverman by Shaba Ranks. So when I did Shaba, because I used to play dancehall records. And Vivian Scott Chu came to me. She was doing a for Epic Records back at that time. And said, I want you to give me an American hit. Because it was a dancehall record. And it was called Champion Lover. It wasn't even called Mr. Lover Man. So I had did um, um, another dancehall record before that, where it was Shaba and Maxi Priest. And that's where I got there, where Maxi said, Shaba, so I totally got rid of everything and just kept, um, well, basically, just the vocals. And I flipped, I actually flipped the chorus. And I put Maxi Priest in there. Um, I had Eric play keys, put some hip, put in piece of present hip hop beat under it. And the rest was golden history. I mean, so uh, I never expected that record to go like, to do what it did. That, when I saw him as a guest on your senior hall show. Right. <laughs> and I was like, this guy's on your senior hall show because that record was massive. So we're talking about multi plan Yo, so that means the original writers and the producers, they went ran to the bank. I got a flat fee. Right. I got a flat fee. Okay. Now, I rewrote the music. Hell, they changed the title. They changed the title. Oh, you understand? They changed the title. That's a big, that's a big so, change. So you write when, the music and they change the title too. Go ahead. <laughs> when I'm watching your senior hall show, I never forget. I never forget to this day. I was st standing behind a sofa. He thanked Chubb Rock. He changed somebody else. Nothing for them. And I was like, I don't exist. You know what I'm saying? I, I even went to the record release party. And it was all these hip-hop people, r and was like, I was like, what am I doing here? Because... I was invisible. Meanwhile, I put that kid on the map. I mean, he was a big dancehall artist. Yeah. Mind you, you know what I'm saying? But that record, just, until he opened his mouth and screwed things up, that thing was massive. And then let's take it to the next, let's take it to the next level. Now let's go to Mariah Carey, Dream Lover. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. How the hell did you pull off getting her to tell the story complete? On that one. So they sent me the original, and I was, I was never a Mariah Carey fan. You know what I mean? Not, no. You know, I mean, it's not that in respect. I, I just wasn't, you know, I, 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 didn't, I, I didn't listen to her music. She just, she, her, she wasn't in my lane. You know what I mean? So they sent me the original, and we all know the original dream. Love. I was like, I can't do nothing with that bubblegum shit. I'm like, you know what I mean? It, so I just wait, wait, I was like, who are you telling this to? Because you're telling this to somebody. Judy, who are you talking no, to? Yeah, yeah, of course I told Judy like that. Well, she, no, she, I can't do this shit. She, she, she couldn't do it. Because I had to I had to approve everything, say yes or no. And I was like, but you listen, Mariah Carey, when she was 21, she was the hottest shit. Yo. But I was like, I, I can't do nothing with this. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and by 1993. You know what I mean? It's not 1987 anymore, 1988, when I'm uh, I'm just mixing anything come them comes my way. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying, I'm saying, <laughs> I mean, I'm saying no to David Bowie. I'm saying no to the Rolling Stones at this point. You know what I mean? And because I'm just not feeling the record. So, and I just threw it out. I was like, listen, it, 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 this, because they really wanted me to do it. It's like, this, I don't see anything happening unless she sings the record. Mind you, 
I'll never produce a track in my life. No, that's not true. No, that's not true. No, 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 that's not true. I never produced a major artist. Right, because you did some records already by that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah, I did like, Robert what? Owens. I did by yeah. no, no, no. That no, that was my first superstar, dude. And it was Mariah Carey. Okay. okay. Go ahead. They called me on the bluff. They called you out on it, right? They called me out. And I was like, oh shit. <laughs> 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 because, because you because, know what we all thought that too we probably said he wasn't gonna get that shit and boom no listen i wasn't tripping it was in cold it was like you know i was like i was still in remix land you know but so i got i i i go to see with copper and you know you know and we came up with the groove because me and copper came up with the groove we came up with we had no vocals we had nothing we just created a track we created a piano that just looped you understand? Dun, 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 dun. That was it. She came in. She rocked that shit for points. I, we all got to hear Mariah Carey in a different way that we never even knew she was capable of. Which studio? You know we I mean? got at that, which studio were we working at that time? Do you remember? Quad, quad. Upstairs, right in the in the penthouse. No, I used to. I worked up. I, I used to. We used to rule. Uh, the eighth floor in the penthouse. Right. So, but man, but man, we had the eighth floor booked for many years. That we were me, me and Frankie on the eighth. And, when, and, and whenever we used to override, we used to use use a penthouse. So she comes in and she rocks the mic. Really rocks the mic. She rocked that shit. I mean, you know, she took the same song and flipped it. The same song. Did all the vocals and everything. I was like, nobody would, could be in the session. No one. No one. And she was like, locked down. You know what I mean? Locked down. No friends. No. It's like engineer, producer, and that's it. it was just you, her? Me, 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 her, and John Popo. And that's it. No Tommy Matola, right? No Tommy Matola. Oh, of course. Tommy Matola. <laughs> yeah, he'd come in, but, you know, they had on lock and key back in them days. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, and what's funny, the one record I got, the one remix I had royalties on, the one remix they didn't release on 12 Inch in America, only on promo. <laughs> only on promo. Jeez. They didn't want her to be recognized as, um, as a dance artist. And why is that dance word so bad? No, wait. But let's fast forward now to where we are now. You understand? Or let's no, go even up to 10 years. Time. Wait, yeah, wait. No, no, no. But forget about that time because dance was like something. But now when we come into the EDM era where everything is dance and commercial, oh, now let's all do dance. It's accepted. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. But right. back then it was back then it was like it was such a bad word. Yeah. You know exactly. what I mean? You imagine trying to get an R and B department. If they knew that R and B artists got a dance mix, they didn't want to work it. They didn't want to work the record. They don't care how good it was. No, and let me tell you, and out of, I don't care what people say. Listen, I mean, she, she gets her personal life all wrong. Whatever you want to say, but when it came to her work in the studio, she's a real deal. I mean, I mean, she's she is she's no joke. Her writing skills, her singing skills, you know her creativity and the, the singers I got to work with and I met, you know, Melanie, uh, you know, Melanie Daniels for one that I've been working with almost 30 years. You know it's what I'm saying? Crazy, right? 30 years. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And, 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 you know, to some of you folks out there, listen, I mean, I, I want y'all, and I'm talking about to the young DJ producers that are watching this and pay, pay attention. It's like, Yes, I'm good at what I do now, but I've had some great teachers and some great education along the way. Make no mistake, I am spoiled. I work with the baddest musicians. I remember when I was watching the Michael Jackson documentary and had Bashiri Johnson in it. And I'm like, that was my percussion player. Hey, you know what I mean? And he's in a documentary where he was on tour with Michael Jackson, Steve Thornton, Omar Hakim. Um, Oh my God, the background singers, Terry Burris, Peter Schwartz, Eric Cupper, um, 
I mean, you know, I've been spoiled by working with John Papo, David Sussman, Hugo Dwyer, from engineers to musicians to percussion players. I've worked with some of the best in the world. So, you know what I mean? The talent is like, the bar is up here. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's crazy. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, like I said, I'm doing this. Well, I'm, I'm making records since 19, uh, adding whatever, so really since 1985. So, you know, it's been a long, is it, and still evolving with the technology and still playing a game because thanks to the technology, because, you know, if you take your studio, thank God you have that studio in your house, Lenny, you have an amazing, I don't have an SSO, but even when I had- when, No, but when me, I had, why I have this is because I was around these guys. I say it all the time. Right, but, but at least, but the thing is like back in them days, you know, it's like you had to rent a studio. It's like you, you, you had to plan and make time and schedule how you're going to go about this. Whereas today, you got your laptop and your shit. It's like my studio goes everywhere with me now. Yeah, even back speaking. then, you had to be correct because it costed good money. You couldn't jerk around if you were paying that yourself. Right? Right. Um, you, no, had to, right, right. No, you had to have a plan. You had to come in there, right? Otherwise, you're going to just throw money in the fire. But wait, but but let me give you a funny story. So I work with the first time I work with Todd Terry, the legend. Okay. Now Todd Terry must have been born with an SB twelve hundred. I swear to God. I say when he popped out that that machine was under his arm. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to do a record at my house. It was here the music. And I said, you know, because I, I, lived, I lived in Brooklyn, Atlantic Avenue, and I had a bedroom there. There was a studio. I had a 16-track studio. We were used to envision in them days um, with the Mac, you know, had a console. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. I asked Todd, Todd, you need me to rent anything? He goes, no, no, I don't need anything. You don't need anything. Okay. He shows up. She shows up with a box. SP-1200. Turn me out. <laughs> Turn me out. So when you hit Bango, Can You Party, Day in the Life, all those records, yo, SB 1200, yeah. case closed. You know what I'm saying? He like, whoa, you know what I mean? So <laughs> the one thing, and, and to tell people, and I had this conversation with someone the other day, it's like, you can't get caught up because, it's, it, listen, especially the technology today, when it comes to plugins, man, it's like the store is endless, you know what I'm saying? And sometimes some people may get caught up in thinking that they need all of this, all this equipment before they can actually start making records where it's like, do the best and, and, and exploit whatever you can afford to get. You know what I mean? It's all about your creativity on your, you know what I'm saying? If you got a box, work that box to death. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you just got a 909, beat the shit out of that 909. Own that machine. Can you just, can I just do some kind of break and I got to share something because get, get, take a glass of, of your drink because I want to, next week I got to share this. Everybody, you're all here in David, but you know, we spoke about instinctual imagination. Okay. Lee John's on next week. It's funny that he mentioned that and that being part of his history we got lee john it just so happens lee john's on next week from imagination on the third and then following graham park i wanted to cut and give david a chance to regroup because you know we got some more questions to tell and his story is incredible as i knew it would be you know just to hear because i always say everyone's story is important to all the puzzles to how this all came together so again next week we have lee john and then the 10th Grand Park, but we're back. Gave David some time to regroup. You know, like we, we it's it's amazing to hear him talk this way because when we get together, we're laughing, we're joking, but we never get to hear a story laid out like this, and it's kind of nice. 
So go ahead. You got Todd Terry. What record was that? Because I remember when I remember when Byron Stingley came to that studio too, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah. I had I had I, I had that right. studio. I had that studio. I did. I'll be your friend. That's Bobby right. Bobby 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 sang in my toilet. Natural reverb. That's what gave it that sound. <laughs> and Byron Stingley did the same thing. We we did my piece of heaven. Um, and and broke him. He also sang out of my bathroom. And it's funny. Because we went back into the studio to cut it, and it was missing something. So even though we went to quad to recut the vocal, because if you know, we go to a more professional room, blah 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 blah, something got lost. So I still ended up using the original tape that I did in Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? In Brooklyn, with Todd, with Todd. Todd, with Todd is my funniest story because he just really, I mean, it's like I, I, I didn't know what you can do, what you can do with an SP twelve hundred. You know what I mean? It's like I was a king on a nine oh nine and a seven oh seven, seven twenty seven, even the the Alexis HR sixteen. But the SP twelve hundred was like yo. And the sound that machine, that eight bit sound, is what, what every right Kenny every drum Cole. machine has its own. Every Kenny drum Cole. machine, yep. And it's funny to say, every nine oh nine doesn't sound the same. Nope. Every eight oh eight doesn't sound the same. All those analog machines didn't sound the same. The SP twelve was just you know because it was all samples. I mean, but it's like every machine had their own swing. Every machine had their own character. It's like when it came to that swing, SB twelve hundred was king. And no matter what other machine you use, you couldn't match that swing that that machine did. I mean, if you can't put another machine with the same person, it, it, it doesn't lock. It doesn't lock exactly. Right. I heard that many times. I know some people that still use that Atari computer from back. Oh in my! What Steinberg? Yeah. Steinberg. Oh yeah. my God. Top Boy Slim, everyone. He swears by that mini clock. It's dead on for him. He will not get rid of it. See, some people love that simplistic yeah. way of doing things. It works. Let me tell you something. Do you have an XBX8 in your room? No, not anymore. But I remember it. So did, oh my God. Yeah, I have one of those two. It's actually like somebody just sent me a record the other day and they sent me the parts. I was like, they sent me somewhere. It's an SPX eighty clock. It was like, oh no! It was like, you know, what I mean, one twenty four point two. It was like, what is that? Right, exactly. I also remember too when I came to visit you one time. I remember when you were, you would work with the great Michael Jackson, and they were. And I remember this clear as day, and I said to you, "Yo, what's it like?" I didn't care about the session. You said to me, "Bro, I can't leave. They check all our stuff." Remember you? Do you? You gotta tell that story, of MJ. I remember you saying, "Bro, you don't know. They they go through everything." It was that. I went to. I went. They flew me. It was me, John Papo, and Satoshi. Right. We flew out to LA, and we worked at. I think, I think it was Larrabee Studios, and they had a fucking. Oops, sorry. They had a security guard. Oh uh, uh, wait. They first, he, he was first hanging out in the room. I had to put my foot down. I said, at one point, I was like, yo. I was like, no, I have to draw the line. Let him sit outside. You know what I'm saying? Let him sit outside. Yo, I had to sign, sign non-disclosure agreement. I, uh, I got a visit by Wayne Gretzky at the studio because at that time, his wife wanted to be a singer slash dancer. You know, she was one of these bimbos that she wanted to be seen on camera <laughs> you know what i mean she was because she really couldn't but anyway and it was Wayne gretzky and he had us and only because he was wayne gretzky did he even get get to come to the studio do you understand what i'm saying but he couldn't come into the control room nobody was allowed to come into the control room do you understand when i left that person was still there they made sure we didn't leave with anything you know what I mean, I'm talking about spending a week in LA. That was crazy. I I, I said, yo, dude, you got to get out. You got to get out. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like you work. It's like I'm. It's like I'm mixing. It's like wait, we're doing keyboard size mixing. We ain't going nowhere. You know what I mean? 
But that, but wait, that was a scream. It was a Michael Jackson and Janet Jackson single. It was a scream. That was a big thing. See what I told you all? See how I told you the stuff this guy's worked on? Was I joking? I remember. I remember him coming back and I'm running into he's like, You're not gonna believe this. And he tells me that story. No, let me let me tell you. Wait, I got funny wait, ones. Tell me the funny wait, one. Wait, wait. Now I got Aretha Franklin. Yes. I'm with Hodge Gorelli, and we're in Detroit. So, I, you know what I mean? I've seen Aretha in the raw, like grandma style. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like sweatpants, she's going out to, to buy milk. <laughs> so, so we cut the vocal, and I'm like, you know, I, I want to give my opinion, but I'm thinking, how do I give an opinion to Rita Franklin? You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? When, when you have to look back, gee, I'm just a remixer. You know, to her, I'm just a remix. I mean, she's worked with the greats of the greats. I mean, hello, she's Hall of Fame. Ciao. <laughs> but, you know, and she told me something. She, she told me the most important words that I've heard anybody say. Less is more and more is less. And that came when it came to something about lyrically something she was doing. And she made me feel comfortable. And because I have to be honest, like, you know, I, I feel, you know, uh, embarrassed. She was like, don't be embarrassed. She's like, you're here because you know what you're doing. You know what I mean? So, um, and I mean, we were working. And at some point, she says, I'm taking a break. Okay. She's taking a break. Everybody, <laughs> break. <laughs> Everybody, break. Uh, I want some Chinese food. Uh, 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 uh. She was just, you know what I mean? I, you know what I mean? I, 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 I had another great experience with Julio Iglesias. Amazing. Legend. Badass. Oh, my God. I had him call my mother. I called my mother. I said, I have, I have a friend that wants to say hello to you. And because he speaks Spanish on the phone, because of course every mother knows who the Iglesias, you know what I mean? That's I put my phone with who the Iglesias. My mom was like, ah, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God. Talk about, you want to talk about making someone's dreams come true without even realizing it. I mean, the, the, the Donna Summer, that is my ultimate female singer of my life. Hers was the first album that I bought. You know what I'm saying? First album. Uh, I'm surprised I never had a Donna Summer poster on my wall. <laughs> I'm very surprised to hear this. I didn't know this, that you were much into Donna Summer like that. <laughs> I love, and when I got to do Melody of Love with her in the studio, you know what I mean? Um, uh, um, another person I worked with, Jocelyn Brown, and when I was in the studio working with Johnson Brown, we were working on Robert Owens' album. And I'll never forget that for me, it was in general that I said to him, I was like, I played your records when I was a teenager. Caught up in a one night love affair. You know what I'm saying? My first, and that's Johnson Brown. In a life, yeah. And I'm like, for me to be working with you, it's like, I, it's like, it, it doesn't seem real to me. You know what I'm saying? Here I am, X my year. Because remember, at that time, forget about being a DJ. Forget about being a remixer. For being, forget about being a producer. Forget about working with a singer that you're thinking somewhere, somewhere down the line in 20 years, you're going to be working with. Crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I had tears in my eyes. I was like, I'm sorry, but it's like, you, you don't know what this moment, I mean, you know, when you look back and, 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 and I had this discussion with Vince Montana, I'm like, my God, it's like, it's like, you know, I, you know, I, I just buy all your records. I mean, Tangerine, Bus Stop. I'm like, yo. It's surreal, right, Papa? It's a surreal feeling. Well, it's, it's, it's only... It's only when I talk about it and I actually have a chance to reflect on it. Because like I said, 
you know, you just keep it moving. It's like, you know, it's, I'm making music today. I'm in the studio. I'm having a lot of fun. I'm in a great place. I'm loving every moment. Pandemic, no pandemic. You know I mean, it's about keeping it moving. And because there's just so much information going on, you don't have time to reflect. You, you understand what I'm saying? Now there's a lot of time to reflect. Always when everything stops, you have time to reflect. But yeah. when things are always moving, you don't have time to reflect because everything is going by so fast. Well, now, you know, we've followed you in your career with, you know, your DJing. I remember you playing the resident DJ at Pasha with the Deaf Mix Nights, which was a lot of fun because I went many times when I was on the island. I used to come see you. And of course, everywhere you played around the world. I mean, you probably first for many places, first American to play in many, many places. <sighs> but, you know, how did you keep up that lifestyle? You know, which one? You, you know, tra <laughs> what? traveling, concerts. I know everybody says it sounds glamorous. You're traveling all the time. You're playing every night and during the summer, and you, you know, you're doing. How many gigs in the summer? 300 gigs in the summer? That's a lot. Whatever it was. No, not three, uh, 300. Uh, no, 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 no. Nobody does 300. No, no. Well, it's about 30, what is that? 30 a month you did? It, 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 no, you should do at least 50 in the summertime. But in the summertime, we're talking about, yeah, but, it's, but we're talking about July and August. We're not talking yeah. about. We're not talking about May to October. No, I'm talking those two months, of course, and then moving yeah, on yeah, yeah. and doing that. Well, like like I said before, um, you know, there's a there's a compromise. What do you give up? You have to, yeah, because well, you, you know, you have to be selfish. You have to be because first of all, and when you're in a certain category, you ain't saying no to that money. That's you right. Know what I'm saying sure. you ain't saying no to that money, um, and. You you love what you're doing anyway. You know what I mean? It's it's not work. I mean, when somebody asks me, what do you do? I'm like, I'm retired. I've been retired for the last 40 years. And like, you look too young to be retired for you. I was like, I, I don't work. I don't have a job. I said, you're crazy. I mean, I, I make money doing what I love. You know what I'm saying? It's like, if I don't want to get out of bed, I don't get out of bed. It's like, it's a blessing. Yo, it's, that's going to be, but for a lot of people, I think as far as the glamorous, you have it a bit twisted there. And Lenny, you know what I'm talking about. So Well, that's why I'm being facetious, because I so, want so, to explain so, it to everybody. Well, 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 listen, well, for me, okay, yes, I was married. Okay, I got separated. Yes, I have children. But I didn't, you know, I didn't raise my kids. I didn't raise neither, neither one of them. You know I mean, it's like I had this conversation with, with, with Brandon, my oldest, the other day. I said to my like, you know, um, and I, 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 I'm proud of him the way he is with his kids because he's a better parent than I was. You know what I'm saying? And I give it up easy because he's there for his kids. Now, hold on. If he was give, if he had the opportunity of the lifestyle that I have, would he jump on it? Yes. You, you understand what I'm saying? Who wouldn't jump on it? The, the, the problem is to be so patient, you know, because first, you got to take the work. I mean, okay, you, you want to say yes, no, yes, no. But when you're making that kind of money, first of all, it, it doesn't even matter for the DJs what level of income they're making. They love to play records. They want to play records. The idea of traveling around the world to all these different countries, some exotic countries, and get paid to something you love is like, it's a no-brainer. But when it gets, but when it gets hardcore, and the hardcore, this is so it's almost like, <clears throat> be careful what you wish for. You understand? Because to say that it's glamorous, let me tell you something. It's like when you do it for a long time, it's like, and when you got it moving, sometimes you don't have time to rest. You got to go to you finish a gig. You don't get the time to rest. You don't get proper meals. You don't get proper rest. You don't get proper meals. Maybe one meal of the day, which is dinner. Maybe you get to eat a great restaurant, exotic restaurant, this. But then, and sometimes you even want to go to a restaurant, even though they say it's a great restaurant. 
But all you want to do is rest before the gig because you're tired. And that's what I'm saying. Now add on all the other extra other curricular activities that go on top of that, where it's drinking, who, what, where, is it, or whatever. That here's a trifecta, and all of this. You know what I'm saying? And it keeps keeps rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling. And because let's say let's say everybody, the summertime was the busiest time of the year for everybody. It's the worst time for everybody. It's like if anybody was busy. For the most part, I think everybody lost a little bit of weight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you you don't have a structured lifestyle. You don't go to bed every day at the same time. You don't have a meal every day at the same time. Shit. How many times we've had to go to a gig and not even be ready to play? Because, yo, you walk into the room and everybody, yeah, yeah. And you're just, uh, uh, you know what I mean? Can I get an espresso, you know what I mean, to go? You know what I mean? So and to get me going. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. You know, um th the compromise is unfortunately that you have to be selfish. You know what I mean? And sometimes, you know, when you have kids, you have a wife and kid at home, it's really difficult. But what's difficult, but the thing is, is is when you're making this kind of money, and first of all, it's how you make your money. Because you don't have another job. This is your job. This is your job. This is your job. Your and job is to get on the plane. You, and with you, you had not just you, but you had an office. So you got people oh, counting oh. on you. Oh, for sure. You know, people don't forget. You know, you see David Morales going out, but don't forget. It's Death Fix, too. He's got an office behind yo, it. It needs to he, yo, you know, keep going. Yo, a bunch of people. You know what I mean? It's like there's a lot of mouths to feed. Yeah. I They're mean, counting on you, bro. Yeah, I mean, listen, and, and, and even up to the last, you know, the last year, it's like, you know, I've had to let go of some people because of the pandemic, because, you know what I mean? So, and the thing is, when it comes to this game, you have to get as much as you can while you can. You know what I mean? Because it's moving too fast right now. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, okay, listen, when I was, The hottest, one of the hottest things, one of the kings back in the 90s. You know what I mean? Of course, listen, we're in 2021. There's new kings. And another, you know, next year, there'll be another one. And another one, it's like the DJ phenomenon has taken off. I'm happy to have seen what it's become because I feel personally that I have played a role in bringing the DJ game of where it is, you know I mean, to its popularity. You know what I'm saying? Right. And also, and also, what goes with that? So it's really in, amazing to watch this become. I'm not here to hate or to compare today to yesterday. You know what I mean? I don't want to sound like when he's old fast. Oh, but this was better. This, yeah, yeah. Listen, we can talk about that shit forever. The pe the generation before that, be before us, can say that about us, and then some, and then some. That's right. I think it was important to, you know. Oh, people talk about, oh, vinyl slash CD. I remember from vinyl to the resistance that people had against CDJs. And then there'll be this against computers. Now we have controllers. Hey, listen, you know what? There's an evolution. At the end of the day, it's music. And music is made to be played. How it's played. Who gives a shit? That's right. So now we get to the point that you are the superstars we know. And then and one Sunday morning, we open the paper. And we were all shocked to see something that happened to you in Japan with you getting arrested at that time. I, I, I was blown away. I remember calling Kenzo myself to make sure it was real because I was, you know, because you're my friend. And Kenzo said, yeah, Lenny-san, we're trying to get him out. He's on his way to a gig. And we don't know. Kenzo didn't know what happened. Nobody knew yet. They just said that you were taken off a flight. What happened? I have to take it off a of flight. Oh. I don't want to talk about it. Okay. But, but the the only thing that I had, that I and I was innocent. Otherwise, because yes. the Japanese the Japanese system don't play it. The Japanese and and there was a big story about about their system that's really frowned upon because there you're guilty until proven innocent, as opposed to innocent until proven guilty. There they keep you. If you get arrested for whatever infraction, 
they have the right to detain you for 10 days. They have the right. Without question. Without a question. For 10 days. They have the right to hold you another 10 days. Or as long as they want. They have another 10 days if they still want to try and la 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 la. And that was my that was my scenario. They didn't have anything to 10 days, but they they can keep you. You understand what I'm saying? You know, it's an um it's a very humbling experience to say the least. Right. That's what we were talking about earlier when people talk about and let me tell you, people don't know it's like being locked down, you don't know what being on lockdown is. Because being on lockdown is having your dignity taken away from you. Everything, your life taken away from you. You, you know what I mean? It's like, I, I went, I'll tell part of it. I'll tell my experience. How I got there was another story. But I remember that I was up for such a long time that all I wanted to do was go to bed. I was so tired. I was just so tired. Anyway, you wake up and, there's a, and you're in a new world. <laughs> so the funny thing is, so I have my own cell. You know what I mean? Uh, you go from, you don't, you don't take a shower every day. That's what I'm saying. You can't even shave properly. It's like you take, I call them bird baths. So you have to get on your knees and have a big tank of water. And you take like one of these plastic bowls and you dip it in and you go like that. That's, that's your fucking bath. You know what I'm saying? So imagine twice a week, mate. And, you know, I like to shave my body. You know, you know I'm a metro. Man, you said, wait, wait, you said twice a week only in LA? Twice a week, baby. Twice a week. Wow. Now, you know what I mean? It's like I know you clean up very well. We know that. You've always taken no, care. No, and when it comes to shaving, whatever, yo, I had hair. It's like, you know, I, I felt like I had shit crawling on me because my hairs were growing in. It was just like, yeah, oh my God. It was like, you know. Um, but the one is this, okay. But for me, I was more I wasn't feeling sorry. I was feeling this. I was more angry that at 57 years old, I found myself in that situation. That I found myself in a situation. You know what I mean? I'm saying, but how I got there's no story, but it doesn't matter. The point that I'm even going through that at that age. That's, yeah. That's, that's what I'm angry about. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? As far as some things are out of your control to manage, that's, that's no story, but it doesn't matter. I'm in, a, I'm in a predicament no matter what. So anyway, um, you know, so it's really just, it's funny. So that's when your life is put on stop. You understand? You can have a drink of water. Shit, you don't even have a choice of what to drink, what to eat. Forget about that. You have no phone. You have no television. No nothing. It's funny. <laughs> I have one of the, one of the, the, the corrections officers. And none of them spoke any English. So I'm the only American on the block. And I'm a superstar. You know what I'm saying? Right. To them, I'm a superstar. Sure. I remember they, one of the CEOs, he was, he was, you know what I mean? I mean, I got along with everybody, you know. It, it ain't much to get along, you know what I'm saying? And the guy was like, oh, they Morales, uh, but I cut it, but I cut it, but I cut it. He bought in because during lunch break, they would only put this Japanese talking talk shows, whatever, on the, on the radio. And then uh, other than that, it would be quiet. You, you know, you, you, you know, you end up reading books. He bought in a Mariah Carey album CD with, uh, I think it was a fantasy album that I didn't want to have my name on it. I was like, I was like, wow. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, it's like, so when people, it's like the one thing I've learned, I mean, because it's really, it's really one thing. It, it's a lot when everything is taken away from you and your life is uncertain because you don't have no idea what's going on. Even a different country, it's like you're out of your realm. You know what I mean? The language is child. You know what I'm saying? So you ain't having no conversations with nobody. 
Right. Zilch. You're on your own. You're really on your be, own. Be, you're really on your own. Besides my lawyers, okay, I read a book. I was reading 400 pages a day. I was doing 700 posters a day. I was trying to get up to 1,000. <laughs> I was doing 700 posters a day. Um, reading and, you know, it just is, it's, it's an old saying when you're having fun, time flies. When you're not having fun, time moves very slow. Very slow. And, you know, so when I've come to appreciate really the simple things in life, because everything was taken away from me, everything. The only thing they couldn't take away from me was my health. And that's the most important thing we should all be grateful for is health and freedom. Everything else is a luxury. Don't get it twisted. A luxury. You hear what I'm saying? It's a luxury. Because if you look at everything that's going today, if it doesn't matter what was going on today, this whole pandemic, and everybody's locked down, people are crying, oh, I need to get out, oh my God. Yo, yeah, I'm sorry. You have your phone, you got your TV, you got right. your essentials. I mean, you're not locked down. You're just inconvenience. Right. You just can't have it your way and you don't get it. You understand what I'm saying? And that's that extra thing. But man, you be when you put in that kind of predicament, you'd be like, you take, you know what I mean? You take house arrest <laughs> over being somewhere else, period. You know what I mean? So it's about being grateful for what you have. You know what I mean? The basic necessities. Because forget about everything else. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like, and the same thing when it comes to, you know, when it comes to this superstar DJ shit which I really call it Thank an illusion. You. I am so glad you said that because I am so happy you said that. It perfect. You know I mean, for, for me, oh for me, it's, it's, it's an illusion. Right. You know I mean, because you don't wake up being a superstar. The people give you that title. That's the people right. make you feel that way. But you shouldn't get it twisted and actually believe. You shouldn't drink the Kool-Aid and actually take it and believe that shit. <laughs> you mean Because you got to be out of your mind. I mean, because at the end of the day, when the, as Robert would say, when the curtain is through. That's true. Lights come down and you go back to your hotel room and that door closes. It's and quiet. nobody, ba, 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 are, and you look in the mirror, are you okay with what you see? Or do you, or better yet, do you recognize yourself? Because some people get lost in the abyss. You I understand know. what I'm saying? Sure. I mean. It's like, and, and don't get, and, and let's make no mistake. Just because somebody makes more money and some people look up to you, it doesn't make you better than the next person because sometimes money makes people, you know, just assholes and a sense of entitlement that, you know, I mean, it's like, you know, you have to remember those, those people, are the one that, those people, are the one is because of their love and support that got you to where you are. So that doesn't mean you're better than them. You're allowed to mistreat them. You're you're allowed you're allowed to to look down on them, even to the next guy coming up. Because for me, it's about paying it forward. And I truly believe in pay, in, in paying. I've given headphones away. I've given away my T-shirts. I've given away jewelry to other DJs. And you know I mean, and you, and you understand? It's like I know. I know how you are. And it's true. He is very generous. I can state that. I've seen it myself with him. He's a sweetheart. And he's a diva too. He's rock. Don't believe the hype. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't get it twisted, bitches. Listen to me. Don't get it twisted. He's a diva too when he needs to be. Back hey, in yo, the front. Okay? Yo, so here's yo, the deal. Here's that's the deal. Brooklyn, but, but that's Brooklyn. That's yeah. Brooklyn. That's so here's now let's talk about this pandemic and church mass. But even before that. So after Japan, you started to reset. I remember we spoke and production started again. You got right back into the swing, you know, like what you do. Like you said, let's get moving. What was the plan, the mindset? You know, where were you going forward? Because you were at 57 now and you're at this part of your life now. What was, what was mindset for you? You know, just to keep it moving. You know what I mean? Because, you know, I hit a rough patch. I mean, financially, I took a major hit. I took a beat down. I mean, I couldn't book any gigs. 
You know what I mean? And nobody was touching me at the moment. Um, I was supposed to work with, with, with Patty LaBelle on some cuts, and I'm sure, you know, because of what happened to me, you know, I mean, you know I mean, so there was some things that affect. I, I had these. I, um, I had a clothing line set up that was going to launch in Amsterdam doing the ADE down the tubes. You know what I mean? So, oh wow, I didn't know. You that. Know I mean, I've had to, I've had to really regroup hardcore. You know what I'm saying? Um, I have to say, I'm, I'm fortunate to have some great friends because when it shit hits a fan, it's when you really realize who your friends are. And that's, you know what I mean? And that will dwindle down to, if you're lucky, three. If you're lucky. If you're lucky. I was going to say, you're lucky you even have three. Yeah. I mean, I mean, um, I mean, but, but, you know, having some great people around you, you know, you, ju you, know, you just keep it moving. You know what I mean? How long did it take to you to get back to your normal, normal game again? What? To, to be calling since and doing damage control. How long did that take? Six months, a year of hard work. What were you doing to, you know, to get that back? The image back, you know, people to think, believe in you again, you know, believe in David Morales, what he is, the, the you know, the, the but, but, but you want to know something? It's in, I don't care about that. You know what I'm saying? I don't care about that because, you know, I, I bring my life full circle. You know, I am the man who I, I, I am the man that I am today. It's because of my life since I was a kid, the hood, Flatbush Avenue, gangster life, getting shot when I'm 15. Um, you know, you know, seeing friends of mine get killed. Hang on, no, I never knew. I never knew that. I didn't know you get shot. I went to I went to more funerals when I was a kid. You said, I mean, you said I'm an old. You said I'm I'm an old stick up kid from back in the day. So, you know, I've done some things I'm not proud of. Music has been my savior. You, you, you understand? It's like, it's like, I really have to say, the music has really pulled me out of some really dark trenches. And it, it, still, it still has pulled me out of some dark trenches. You understand what I'm saying? So it's not about being in other people's good graces because the one thing i understand with the social media and everything people are quick to write you off they'll talk shit about you and all this kind of nonsense and you know you can't be stressed about those things because you have to know who you are believe in who you are and keep it moving case closed because it is what it is you know what right. I mean? so as far as how am i going to get back no i mean it's like you have to believe in yourself it's like you know what because from one day being in a cage to the next day being a free man, it's like I, I, I went from one dimension to the next. I went from one place to a drastic improvement. So that alone, my life improved. Sure. So the rest, it wasn't going to be that deep. I got over the, over the hardest part and I was getting out of the cage. The rest, you know what I'm saying? So it didn't take long. It's, it's not, you know, take long. I mean, you know what? It's like okay. It could seem to it could seem like a long time. We saw about six, seven, eight months. I mean, you know, you mean to get the gigs rocking and rolling. You know what I'm saying? But then here we go. But here we jump into one point, and then who comes around the corner? COVID. <laughs> right. You that's, understand? That's, that's so for yo. Thing. So for me, let me tell you something. I got the double smack down. So I, I didn't even get a chance to come. You know what I mean, just as I'm coming up, it's like, wow. You know what I mean? So now, okay, back to back bad things, but okay, I got no control over things. So it's like, keep it moving. And I have to say, you, you want to know what it is like, my my Sunday mass is what keep gives me the balance today. You understand? Sure. As as this whole game has evolved. I mean, the business has evolved. How the entertainment has evolved. You know, one one of the keys of being being a game changer or or a game player is to understand how things are going. You know what I'm saying? And evolve with that. You want to be ahead of the curve as opposed to behind the curve. 
Right. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to miss the bus or the train. So, I mean, and it's funny, it's like next month will be a year of doing Sunday Mass. Now, Sunday Mass, I started in this studio with an iPhone, listening to music coming out of those speakers. That was the first Sunday Mass. You understand? Where I had it on the, on the stand, child. Yep. Okay. It evolved now. <laughs> Sound card, green screen, cameras, lights. It's like, it's a whole nother, you know what I mean? You got Twitch, you got Mixcloud. I mean, you know, it first started on Facebook, then YouTube. And now, you know, it's, it's just this whole, it's just this whole other game. You know, people, I, I, I mean, people have asked me what's going on with Facebook and why is everyone having takedowns? I know the answer, but I would like you to explain it because I know you're frustrated. It must be a little frustrating as well. You're doing your, your show. I, I don't use Facebook anymore. I haven't in months, months. I don't even do YouTube anymore live at all. YouTube, I'll put something because they don't pay copyright. Okay. And I totally understand, um, with all respect, I understand, because I'm a songwriter producer. So you understand? But, but this is what a lot of people don't know. I'm going to break it down now. Go ahead, David. Break it down, baby. Hold on a second. Let me pull my own way up. He's going <laughs> to break, break it down so you all No, no, no. No, no. Okay, so check this out, right? So you know that ASCAP and BMI for America. In Italy, we, it's called CI. Mm -hmm. So in reality, every club, every bar, okay, every bar um, that has somebody playing music, they're supposed to fill out um, a sheet with every a list with everything that they play and submit it to ASCAP or BMI. Every single business, even if it's a restaurant with a DJ, anybody that's playing pre-recorded music. How do you think the artists and the songwriters are supposed to get paid? Okay. CI in Italy automatically and before they will have people have to fill out to fill out a playlist. Now you can put if you make records, yeah, well, you know, I play 15, 10 or 20 of my records. They're not clocking you. So, okay, but at least you, so at least you get the credit. CI in Italy, mandatory, takes money from the entrance of every person that comes in, guest list or not, because they're listening to music. Okay? So here we are in this other thing. There's a platform. So in reality, you're playing a platform somewhere and now with the streaming, this shit is all over the place. It's like, wow. But you're replaying people's music. And like I say, technically speaking, every time it's not the DJ's fault per se. You understand? It's because the rules weren't enforced to begin with. In America, they're not enforced at all. It's a disaster. <laughs> I mean, and 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 in most in most countries, it's a disaster. Italy is the only one that's kind of strict. Then now in Italy, they're going to install a box to read the music, to read the algorithms. You know what I mean? So now there's no fooling to say, okay, I play 10 of my tracks. When you read, In my case, I do play 10 of my tracks. But um, so this is why you get, you're getting it turned down. This is why I used to be, I used to like go like this, you know, because I've mixed so many big records over the years. And of course, a lot of them are major labels, you know, like for instance, as much as I would love to play Space Cowboy Jamiroquai, it's the one track that's blocked all over the world. Because when it comes to YouTube, let's say uh, um, I could play on YouTube and if certain tracks would just knock the whole channel off his feet. And then there's some other tracks that I'll get a report the next day. This is blocked in this country. This is blocked in this country. Da, 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 da. 
So I got introduced to Mixcloud because Mixcloud is the only platform that pays copyrights. They don't have problems. They have zero issues at all. Boom. The best platform. Now, they don't save the actual video, but they save the playlist. But they're the ones that out of every subscription, they give 35% towards copyright. Now we head to Twitch, where Twitch doesn't give anything to copyright, which I don't know why they, they, they don't because blah, 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 blah. But he, here's a similar problem happening on Twitch that was happening on YouTube and Facebook. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I mean? So when people get frustrated, is unless, the only way you get around it, you have to mess with the algorithm. And somebody once told me that there's some way to mess with the algorithm because with the algorithm, the reason why hip hop DJs don't get tapped. Go ahead. Because they don't, they don't play a record long enough for the algorithm to catch it. And house music, you can't do that. It'd be like a bit can't and do that. So if, so if Dazzy Jeff goes, bah, 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 da, 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 oh. it doesn't read the algorithm. So it's, it, even if it's a mashup, you know what I mean? They have those algorithms. They hear that melody. They go, yo, you. Hello. And you're off the air. And you're off the air. It's like when I remember, and, and sometimes it's the strangest records that you get bounced. I remember when they did it to me on one of my own records. I was like, wait a minute. Now this is, this is getting beyond now. <laughs> yeah, right. It's my record on my <laughs> label. You got to be joking. You know what I'm oh. saying? You got to be kidding me. Yeah, you understand. But you know what? Here we go once again. I talk about the evolution. It's a new day. You know what I'm saying? This it, look, look, look how far the streaming game has become. Really, in the last ten months, it's crazy. It was I mean, nothing I mean, to everything. I mean, I mean, it's like the lines were jammed at one point. Do you remember? <laughs> By the summertime, it was like every man for himself is yeah, like, yo, it's yeah. like, boom. Okay, so here we go. All right. So now, okay, <laughs> yeah, exactly. so you, you, have to, you have to lead the pack in other ways because what's next? I mean, so here we go. The evolution, the technology, the presentation. Whoa, my God, here we go. Now is a personality. I mean, it's like, Wow, but but you know what I mean to stay relevant, whatever that means. It's like you have to evolve with the game if you want to play the game. Oh God, I know it's scary, it's horrible, and at the same time, you got to be the innovator, keep ahead of the game pack. Well, you know what I mean it's like well, you know, and you know, it, 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 and look, it, it, look, Dave, a lot of people are frustrated, bro. You know that. This is the only way they can perform. I'm not talking about, you know. No, but listen, listen, but, but we're all in that square. I'm in the same You know place. what I mean? You know what I'm saying? No, I, listen, listen, I, li I live for my Sundays. Trust me. I know you do. I see you. My, and my, my son, oh. I, I never thought in a million years, because before, when I used to have to record my one hour radio show. Right. Okay. Which I'm still doing the same shit, right? The difference is. I'm thinking there's an audience out there because I'm relaying to a chat line. I can't see nobody. You right. understand? I, I'm only looking at myself in a monitor. But, and it used to be work to do that one hour. I'm playing four or five hours. If it wasn't for my neighbors, I'd still be playing to the next day. So I've, I've, I've learned to take my Sunday mass. It's my favorite. I swear, I feel like I'm playing at a club. You know what I mean? First of all, it's like my club, my thing, it's personal, which means I'm in my box, I'm in my lane, I'm in my zone from top to finish. I'm not following, so it's like, it's my thing, period. I do what I want. When, when you have that level of comfort and it comes to playing music, and when you have the knowledge of span of 40 years plus of music and everything to share with the world, Yo, it's like, it's my favorite gig. I think no matter what I go back to, it's still going to be my favorite gig of the week. You, you understand? And it's funny, it's just, and you, you know, how it, it's amazing how 
And I think it's a humbling experience because it takes you back to square one. Yeah, I mean, I've never, I don't want to say practice, I don't practice, but I've never played so much in my studio because during the years when you have to, where you, you have to always, you're always, you're always touring, there was no reason to play records in the studio. You know what I mean? Because you, you wanted to rest. But now in playing nowhere, you know what I mean? Okay, it helps to have a great sound system in your studio and some good gear. I mean, but it really doesn't matter. Whatever you have, I don't care if you have a controller, you have, a, you know, what, whatever it is when it comes to playing. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm, I'm really back to basics. But besides not being able to go out, because I really, listen, traveling has been in my DNA for the last 30 years. I miss going to some of these great restaurants in certain countries and, and all these things. Um, we were talking about earlier, you know, um, I finally got to see, understand something yesterday because I live a life so fast and I've been traveling for so many years that the luxury for me was to be home and have some downtime and have some quiet time to myself. That was the luxurious part of my life because the other part is normal compared to to us, me, and some of y'all out there. We can change places. It's another story. But for me, what you have is a luxury to me, and what I have is a luxury to you, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so I don't mind <laughs> the little holiday the mandatory holiday that I thought would be three, four, five, six months. Okay, I welcome the mandatory break. I think we all did. I think we you all know what did. I'm saying is I won't. But then as I carry on, it's like, okay. So as I'm walking yesterday, I mean, so it took a minute and I'm 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 taking inventory around me as I always do. So and I'm noticing like just people and I realized that I think can you imagine when so many of us are like, wait, the lockdown are locked up and you can't leave your house because in Italy, it became a point that you couldn't leave until you're going to, to an essential store, supermarket, and as you buy yourself, but in reality, you had no business being in the street unless you were walking your dog. And if you don't have a dog, you shouldn't be outside. But can you imagine what it is when something goes on for, for a month? Okay, so, so a month alone. Imagine the people that live by themselves. Forget about that, you, you, that, you, that you have a wife, you have a girlfriend, even though you want to kill each other by after a couple of weeks. <laughs> but as still, you're still grateful that you have somebody to argue with. Right. Somebody's there with you. Somebody's but there. Imagine, imagine some people that don't have, don't have that. You understand? Don't have that. So when I realized just in walking, I was like, man, because even for me, and I have no problem spending time by myself. It's like, I'm the king of that. I can write a book about that. But I appreciate it just to the surrounding and just to see that people just want to see people. You just want to see people to know that, yo, this is not Mad Max. <laughs> you know yeah, this is real. Yeah, this, this is still, you know. It's well put. And you know, we have to survive this because we're all going to come back. And when this thing opens up, you know, it's going to be crazy. But at first, I don't believe it's going to be like people are going to be scared. But as soon as they know we can come back out and play, it's going to be madness again. Yeah, I, I guess I guess the word is when, but it will. Like here, I hear here, they don't plan the indoor clubs. They're not going to open until 2022. Right. They're, they're looking that far already. Right, because they. So, 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 unless maybe the summertime clubs, because with the You're vaccine, yeah. it's open air and with restrictions, I think maybe that will be. But I think, and then when it goes back to indoors, I mean, unless they, it's like, listen, for my sake, because I make money this way, <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, thank God that as a producer, songwriter, you know what I mean? I, I get some royalty checks, you know, like, you know, you say, listen, listen, that helps. Of it course. ain't the same money as before, helps. but Everything you know I mean? I'm, I'm not, I'm not eating filet mignon. It's like I'm eating Brussels sprouts and rice. Okay. You know I mean? so. <laughs> but you, the key thing is you're eating. 
and you're still saying you no, listen, I'm eating what I want at the end of the day. I and know. when I want, what, what right. I want, when I want, when I want, you got you know the food, you're good. When I want, right. when I want. So, I mean, I understand something, you know, something. So very you know what? It is what it is. You just got to keep it moving. That's it. Martin Luther King weekend came and I always take a Frankie, you know, and I thank him many times for playing my records and how important he was to our scene. How much has he really missed David? Because I miss him a hell of a lot. I miss calling him. I miss him telling me this. <clears throat> Get over it. Pull it together. He would always tell me because I would be like, why is this happening? He'd be like, what do you think? You're the only one. This I can hear him telling me this. What do you think? This is the, you're the only one going through this right now? He would tell me off. He said, girl, go back in that room, pull it together, come back out and talk to me again. And that's, okay. and that's the way he was. He'd let you, let, he'd let you have it. And he loved uh, it. We had a great Sunday mass from two weeks ago. That was really amazing. Had some great talent on there. It really went well. Um, well, it's like, it's one of the most traumatizing things that happened to me in my life, you know? Um, I'm actually better, you know, was it six years later, I can actually start to talk about it without getting, you know, <clears throat> like before you went, I was like, okay, take a deep breath. But before I, I, I used to have a hard time talking about it. You know I mean, now it's like, you know, the, before it was hard to look at pictures um, or listen to uh, some interview, you know, and hear his voice, you know what I mean? Something like, uh, but, you know, I, I think, you know, it, it's important to celebrate someone's memory and, you know, and always, and always remember that, you know what I mean? As opposed to being sad about it, you know what I mean? Because there's, you know, you have to get over You have to process the sadness. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But he'll live on through all of us, especially I know you celebrate him all the time because I hear you always mention his name in those in those Sunday masses. And you play the record. Yeah, but, oh, no, my God. It's like, I was looking at some pictures the other day that I put up on Sunday mass. I'm like, uh, when we think about the story, I mean, I mean the story is like, you know, baby, teenager, young man, grown man. And I'm talking about me, not Frankie. <laughs> right. Uh, oh, good. But you covered a lot, brother. And I can't thank you enough. You're amazing. It's, uh, still you're covering. Gonna, you're going and you're not stopping. I, I hear it now. I know what's going to happen when we come back from all this. When? You're going to stay strong and you're going to keep it moving. Keep that Sunday mass going. We love your records. Yeah, definitely going to keep it. You know I mean, it's funny. It's like, it, it, it's starting to become an institution. It's like every week is better and better. Um, it's kind of ironic to see that, you know, and, and, and it goes with any other thing. It's, it's, it's like, it's, 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 and, it, and even it is, you know, which are how stories show how everything's getting better each week. I mean, I mean look at where you started. Nothing. You I'm not, what I'm saying? I can't say nothing. God bless Marshall Jefferson. I mean, he was my first guest. And we did this just for, to give people something to hear. All of yeah, you. Yeah. Like a forum to listen to you. Yeah. We never get to hear this like this. This no. deep. It's amazing. That's right. That's why, first of all, I've never, I've never spoken about the, especially, I've never spoken about Japan. That's number one. You know what I'm saying? I rarely ever speak about Japan. I mean, I can handle it. It's not like, you know, it's like, but I feel like, oh, tell me, it's like, it's like, only because of what we're doing now, I feel that it's worth it to say it. Well, it's to talk about it. But, yeah. as, but as far as for Joe Schmo to ask me, oh, it's like, you know what, go away. Right. No, <laughs> like, no, no, no. Like, have, go away. No. I know. You know I, go away. No, I, and I appreciate. I, I didn't. I didn't want to insult you. I just wanted to the experience. Oh, no, listen. I got listen. The one. Listen, I got no shame in my game. It's like I own everything that I've done in my life, and I will own everything that I do in the future. You know what I'm saying? So I got nothing to be ashamed about. You know what I'm saying? Is hey, life is a journey. You learn and you keep on walking. You know what I'm saying? And that's all I understand. You know what I mean? I hear you. 
and and it's right it's right to, it's right to that the on the same. So I'll see you on Sunday mass. Don't forget Sunday mass. Yeah, Sunday for him. And we love you, David Morales. You keep doing it. What time is it start? What time are you starting Sunday mass? I start you could be changing in my time. Well, I'm gonna be well, I'm about to move studios because I was That's having problems having problem with my neighbors. Or they're having problems with me. I don't know which way to put it. <laughs> so I have to move studios. And I may actually have to like lock it down for like two weeks while I, you know, because I got to, I'm going to move and do everything the way I want to do it because I rent from a renter. Um, it's not the right time to be spending money, but you know what I mean? I, you know what I mean, the Sunday mass means that much to me that I have to move just because of my streaming and the Sunday mass because I need it as much as everybody else does. It's a therapeutic thing as well. Yo. Absolutely. And no, I don't want anybody to answer the Wait, wait, hang on. Wait, 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 wait. Mickey Affleck and all of them are taking screenshots. He's playing my record on Sunday Mass. I see them all sending it around. So here we go. Once again, all the people in the circles are discussing what you're doing. And that makes all the difference. It's not what, it's not what you intended. You're doing it from your heart. They're making it what it is they're oh, sure. sending it around they're sharing it to everybody that's the difference that's what i try to well, tell everyone when you do great stuff you don't even know yeah. that people no, are listen, listen, listen it's like a tree right it's like a tree and it's also it's about spreading the love right because people know whether if you're a giver or you're a taker you know what i mean well, you know i mean is you know I mean? It's, it's me really to... Wait, wait, wait. Let me share this with everybody. This I want to thank him for. I finished Chocolate Sensation, gave him the dad tape. He played it in Pasha. I was in New York. He's rocking it. He calls me at home and says, yo, Tong, Pete Tong wants to buy the record for FFR. Yo, just take care of me. Make sure I said, yo, I got you. I begged him. I said, "Bro, do me a favor. Please do the remix." And he th and he and he did it. And he rocked it for me back then. And I never said thank you. If I didn't say thank you, I'm saying thank you now, my brother. Love you. Okay. Okay. And that's what it's all about. He didn't have to play it. He believed in it. He rocked it. He said, "Yo, you guys see how the people are responding." That's all he said to me. "Yo, bro, you guys see how they respond?" That was killer too. See what I'm killer. saying? That's that's. I got to about on Sunday. Yeah, well, maybe if you, if you feel like it, but I'm just saying, I have that memory <laughs> etched in my mind that he, him calling me from a business saying, yo, bro, they're going to call you in a minute because I just rocked it. In fact, homeboy grab, he said, homeboy grabbed my tape or whatever it was. He grabbed my acetate. And next thing I knew, they were calling me when I signed the record. So that's how things happen. Yeah, when absolutely. People believe, when people believe in what you do, it goes both well, you might, it's, a, it's, a, it's about sharing. It's like they say, I mix, you know, um, I just hit um, the pandemic remix for Mickey. You know, Mickey didn't ask me to mix a record. I said, Mickey, send me the parts. I want to mix a record. Yo, just like that. Like that. Just like yeah. that. I, was, I said, yo, Merry Christmas. Yo, she told you, yo, Merry Christmas. She this told me I want right to. Yo, she called right away. He said, yo, David called me. I said, what did he call you for? He's mixing my record. I said, awesome. Congratulations, I told her. Just like that. Congrats. Couldn't get a better guy. That's the kind of love we all have for each other. No, absolutely. And and the, the only and the only thing I say what I can say to the next person is pay it forward. Right. Pay it forward. Yeah, you know I mean, leave your attitude at the door. I know. See, for for me, it's like <laughs> I'm laughing because I gotta, I gotta for, take that in for a second. I'm like, know, for me, for me, it's a, you know. I'm just a misunderstood child. <laughs> he knew. He knew. I paused too when I went like. It's like I'm a I'm a misunderstood no, child. No, don't grab I'm, the I'm, Listen, I'm the, grab I'm just very like, Yo, don't grab a champagne in the booth. I got red for that shit from him. <laughs> no, he just don't touch my tequila. <laughs> don't touch his so shit. You got my shit. No, I called Kenny. Kenny. I said, Kenny David yelled at me. What did you take? I went and grabbed the shit. You know, don't grab his fucking champagne. I shouldn't be cursing. Don't grab his, his stuff. And I cracked up laughing. I said, and just the heat of the moment. But that's what we do. And that's the love. And, and that's all comes with the part of the core of this whole game. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Oh my All God. Right. Amazing, amazing time. And everybody has been writing things to you. You'll probably see it all later, but keep strong. Get it to a thousand push-ups. I got to start working out because I'm fat. I'm sitting too much, eating too much. That's the problem. No, I ain't doing too bad. I actually just... Oh, you know what other question I'd ask you? Everybody always asks this question. Not even music. What is the thing with you and tats? Because we always, from time to time, we see you getting tattoos. I don't remember when I met you, you didn't have no tats back then. I had a little Pegasus. A little one, yeah. Yeah, the little one. But I'm talking... That bit, that yeah. bit is gone. As much as I hate needles, too. That's that's what I was going to ask you. How do you deal with it? I'm like... I, it's like, I can't stand getting tattoos. I really can't. But every... Besides the first ones I got, which you don't even see them anymore, every time I got tattoos was um, an evolution in my life. So, so I'm wearing, I'm, I'm, a, I'm actually wearing my story. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. Yeah, I'm wearing, I'm wearing my story. I mean, like my one of the last ones, like this, the star here it has F, it has F K in the middle. Right here. Um, Anyway, this everything has got is evolution. That's why. That's why I tell people if you want to get a tattoo, I, I try to tell my kids that, but them niggas don't listen to me. I try to tell them, yo, you know, when you're gonna put something on your body, ink, it's gonna stay with you forever. So get something meaningful because I was one of those young little, you know perpetrators that got a little Pegasus tattoo because I thought it was cool in a basement of Brooklyn somewhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? But now that I understand that tattoo, you get somebody that's art. I'd rather get somebody that to to ink, to to draw, or use me as a canvas the way that I make music. You know what I mean? As opposed to getting some butterfly or some rose or, you know what I mean? Uh, my girl's name and shit like that. <laughs> Big mistake. Big mistake. You know what I'm Big mistake. How many women have done that? Divorce and now have to go get that tattoo covered up. No, I just had the Pegasus. It was ridiculous. And I had some little tiny thing. It was a little tiny like dragon that I got in Kensington Market back in like 1990, I think in London, then, uh, where Charlie Chester had. I don't know what he had in a record store or or something. I don't know. But now it's like. But if you don't like needles, how do you sit there for, and, and let somebody work on you? I would be going. To, to, to traumatizing. I bet it is. Really. I, th I think that, see, the worst was one time um, I, um, I had flown to Athens and I had to do a gig. I went and had a five-hour tattoo job. Now, I didn't sleep, I didn't eat. Let me tell you something, my body broke down while I was doing the gig. It's like all of a sudden, I lost I lost what was going on, I got dizzy, I had to tell the other DJ to play. I went into the dressing room, I curled up like, like a, like in a fetal position on the floor for about three hours. My body went into shock. Wow, so it's deep like that, huh? Oh my God! And my when I got my back and I got this thing like this yeah. in the summertime, and when you fly, how the dry air, yo, I feel like I had somebody with a knife going across my back like this when I like when go to stretch. Oh, it was nasty. Ah, oh. <laughs> oh. on that note. Those who cannot handle needles do not get tattoos, but God bless David Morales. He could do it because I can't even give blood. No, let's even have somebody work on me. He knows. Oh, no, no. I go like this. Ah! I tell him all the time when I'm with him. Like, like, a, little, like a little bitch. But then no, I, get, I'm like, like the... I get like, like, as soon as I see the red, I'm like, no, I'm out. See ya. Oh, no. it's, it's not even about the red. My God, can you imagine like going, going on your shoulder bone? Oh. And you wait, no, and wait, and you feel that shit in your jaw. Uh, oh, my, never mind. Next, okay, cool. It's, it's like, like drilling. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is real true house stuff now. Now it's all true house stuff. All right, David, thank you very much, bro. Good luck to Sunday, man.
and keep us in the loop with everything you're doing. You know, I'm a big supporter of always your stuff. You know that I love your stuff always. And you know, uh, I, you know, I'm gonna hit you up because you know, so you can bless Sunday Mass. I will. Now, I, will. I, I know you will. I will. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a threat. I'm happy to take. There you go. Ciao, Bye. everybody. Love you, David. Take care, babe. Next week, don't forget, the story continues from David Morales to now Lee John from Imagination. We're going to have a good conversation. David, have a good night. Good luck. Take care, my brother. Ciao, ciao. Peace.